everyone. Welcome to Razor Pay's Geek Talk, the first episode. We have Ashwath here. We are going to talk about distributed denial of service and uh, how we protect our system at Razor Pay. Ashwath, you have a very cool uh, GIF here. It sort of captures the gist here, wherein the red cars are preventing the green cars from being driven on the road. Right. So, can you explain how our systems handle DDoS attacks? Sure. Um, so the whole idea here is, uh, you know, the green cars are supposed to kind of go through and occupy the road, whereas the red cars come in and they create some kind of a traffic jam, which affects the availability and it does not allow the regular population to go through, right? So that's basically the concept of uh, distributed denial of service. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that's that's basically, you know, what we're going to have a chat today about. Right. So can you explain how uh, this works sure. on our architecture? Sure. So whenever we make a request to api.razorpay.com, um, the f that's that's right here. Uh, the first uh, device that comes in the middle is an AWS application load balancer. So we have uh, two uh, AWS devices here, or two equipments, which will kind of help against DDoS attacks. So one is the web application firewall, or what we call the WAF, where firewall rules can be added. And the second piece is shield, where layer three, which is the network, and layer four, which is the transport layer attacks can be prevented. And also they provide some kind of an alarm whenever there's a DDoS attack, right? So the second layer is uh, based on our custom hosted API gateway. Uh, we have multiple plugins here uh, based on rate limiting. So it also takes care of things like authentication, authorization, and whenever you know we have websites where multiple users are sending in requests, we also have the CAPTCHA plugin which sends out like a Google CAPTCHA, right? And the last piece is once all of these rules are evaluated, we finally also send insights as a feedback into our system. And post this layer, it actually ends up at the microservice, which does the business intelligence. So yeah, that's that's like a big I summary. see. So the, if there is any attack that is detected, it gets blocked at the application load balancer by the feedback that is coming from the gateway. So the backend and the microservice is protected. Is Correct. That right? Correct, yeah. So it's two layers of blocking, one at the application okay. load balancer and the second at our API gateway okay. as well uh, because we have two layers of running. So it's more of a defense in depth, uh, defense if, you, in depth. if you like. That makes sense. How do you keep the system up to date though? Sure, very good question, Murli. So that's basically my next slide. Um, so we do have a feedback loop coming in where we have a lot of rich insights coming in from our API gateway uh, that is fed into a Apache Druid, which is our data analytics engine. Uh, so we do pull queries from there to figure out, uh, you know, whenever attacks are happening, right? So the alarm, it's a three stage. So first is the alarm, two is kind of fingerprinting to understand the context of the attack, and three is like the actual mitigation or the prevention. Uh, so the, uh, the first phase, it comes in from both the shield alarm, as well as we have our own custom alarms. And the second one, understanding the context comes in from the Druid. That's the bottom piece here. Uh, so we kind of understand the context and then finally we add rules at the WAF. Uh, so this is the Lambda which goes and adds the rules at the WAF. I see. So what are the levels of uh, understanding? There is There could be IP addresses. Sure. So there could be IP addresses. Uh, we have something called merchants where, you know. Uh, merchants are our customers. Merchants are our customers. And uh, we could also have things at the route level. Uh, which is basically api.razorpay.com slash something, right? So the something URL is paths. Yeah, the URL paths, basically. Okay, so you can protect, configure the firewall rules at various levels. Correct, exactly. I see. So, you know, for us, we have certain enterprise merchants who send a lot of traffic. Right. And there are some small merchants that do not send a lot of traffic. Correct. How is your system capable of recognizing these differences? Right, right. So good question again. So this is where we have uh, the data science algorithm coming in. Uh, so we, since we collect a lot of rich insights, we uh, go and compute and generate context level rate limits. So basically, whichever context is under attack, you know, we want to go add the, the rate limit specific to that particular context at the web application firewall. Uh, so again, we have algorithms con uh, continuously running to figure out the previous historical patterns and then to predict a particular rate limit so that beyond the rate limit is when the anomaly gets the uh, rate limit or you know, we kind of block the rate I see. This is pretty cool. And you also mentioned uh, that uh, the rate limiting uh, does not go to zero. So you, you basically, the details attacks become meaningless by right. reducing the power of the attack. Correct. While you don't, uh, uh, by mistake, turn off the proper traffic 
that the right. merchant is sending. Right. So we have to ride a very fine balance here to make sure that we keep the availability on and do not impact uh, customers because end of the day, if we if our system goes down, then merchants will not get their payments right. and customers cannot go order food or they cannot buy things, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we'll have to ride that fine balance and that's the reason uh, why we have multiple layers and we evaluate uh, criteria at different contexts, right? So it could be at the root level, merchant level, IP address level and so on, right? So we it's, it's, it's a difference in depth, like I said. Yes, pretty cool. Thanks for explaining, Ashwat. Thank you. Thank you, Goldie. Thank you all. Thank you.